Welcome to the Elevate Everyday podcast, and we've got the first of a three-part series for you guys today. We've got macros, part one, and we're starting with what me and Herb think is the most important macro, and that's going to be protein. Okay, so so real quick, what protein is, you know, because compared to the other macros, it doesn't really give you energy. Um, what it actually does for the body is it's all about recovery, right? Like that's what's going to rebuild you after working out, you know, not only your muscles, but like it's good for your organs, just kind of all your connective tissue. It's just what's going to help you recover and, and build you up. Um, so, so that's what we're talking about, protein. The, the first thing I wanted to dive into with you, Herb, and I'll, you know, I'll get your opinion and then I'll kind of chat on it too, but just how much protein do people need? Oh, it depends on what their uh, outcome they're looking for. Um, the numbers statistically, uh, you know, half a gram per body weight to a gram. Um, I think that's for sedentary people. If you're functionally training, you're running, you're a non-impact athlete, maybe, you know, a gram, gram and a half. If you're a competitive person that likes to build muscle and you're trying to tear it up, um, man, as much as two, two and a half grams. You know, there's so many illusions about protein. Um, you know, we were talking about it before we started the podcast. My biggest problem is this. They tell you that if you eat too much protein, it'll ruin your kidneys, even good kidneys. Now, here's the fact, because I've talked to so many virologists over the years. If you have good kidneys, no issue. You can eat as much freaking protein as you want. It's never been documented to hurt your kidneys. It's simple. But everybody runs with the myth that, oh, it hurts bad for your kidneys. If you have a kidney issue, anything's bad for your kidneys. Yeah. Right. So again, protein is your best friend. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I completely agree. It's, it really is really individual. You can't really just, you know, people are like, how much protein do I need? It's like, okay, well, we got to unpack that and kind of talk about your goals. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's why everything, you can't just have a cookie cutter meal plan. So if you're just, if you're looking something up on the internet, just like, shoot me up a meal plan or like you're like chat GPT, make me a meal plan. Like there, there's so much more that goes into it, right? We, we got to know your activity level. We got to know your goals. Um, got to, we got to know your history, even of like what you've tried in the past, what you've done, what works for you. Um, but, but I agree. Yeah. If you're, if you're completely sedentary, if you're just not going to work out, yeah, you don't need that much, like half a gram to a gram at most. Um, and then, you know, but if you're adding in resistance training, if you're breaking your mus muscle fibers down, we need to rebuild and get you back stronger. Um, so, so at the very least a gram per pound is what I usually recommend for people. And then kind of depending on people's goals and what, how intense they work out and things like that, we may, you know, go even higher than that. So yeah, and it, it's really individual. We got to figure out all that type of stuff. So, um, but let's, let's kind of talk on, you know, this is something you just did a, a whole coaching call on it recently. Uh, but let's, let's speak on the quality of protein. Cause it's not just, you know, just protein. Like you punch everything into yeah. my fitness pal. If you're just getting yeah. all your protein from like, you know, <laughs> if you got it all from yeah. like vegetables and stuff like that and, and plant-based, sometimes the quality isn't there and you're not getting the, the complete proteins that you need. Um, so, so what's, what's your perspective and just, you know, speak on that well, a little bit. Well, the definition of a complete protein is the fact that uh, the protein is made up of amino acids. 20 amino acids, nine are essential. OK, so I would almost like to get rid of the word protein. We need amino acids. Each amino acid has a different job to do in your body. OK, a lot of this goes on in your gut. OK, um, there's a big push now on people taking peptides, which are just small branch chain or small chains of amino acids tied together. Your body makes them. It just takes so much the process that you can make these um, injectables and they work. Okay. So you need amino acids. So the quality of protein, I went over a biological value of protein. Good example, uh, whey protein is the highest biological value, 98%. Okay. On the scale of one to 10, um, soy protein, like 32. Okay. So again, if you're saying, Hey Herb, I want to build some muscle. It's pretty simple. The numbers don't lie. Okay. So again, the, Quality of protein is probably as important as anything else you're going to do in the day. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and we work with clients, you know, that are vegan, vegetarian, or people that just can't really eat that much meat for, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, with, with those types of people, like you said, it's like, we got to make sure we're getting all the amino acids because, you know, when we say how much protein do you need, if that, if that person's getting a gram per pound, but like they're missing half of the amino acids they need, 
then that's not enough, right? Like we have to make sure we're mixing and matching. And, you know, there's things you can do like rice and beans creates a complete protein and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. but you have to be, you know, the thing about if you're choosing to be vegan or vegetarian is you have to have the discipline and the knowledge to make sure that you are getting all those amino acids that you do need. So, um, and, and it's something we mentioned on, on the coaching call that we did the other day was not only just making sure they're complete, you know, high quality proteins, but I even think like the, the quality of those quality proteins, like, like, like I've been going more towards like more organic meats and stuff like just, you know, higher quality, you know, spending a little bit extra to get good quality proteins. Um, because I think it makes a big difference. Yeah. You know, and, and there's just not a lot like more filler and stuff like that in those types of foods. Yeah. So. I mean, if you're getting beef, look for grass fed, yeah. um, you know, uh, raised on a farm, not, you know, in a, in a building, you know, in a cage. And it, it's hard because you're going to pay extra for that. Yeah. You know, but it just, it, it and you know, I'm the same thing. I got a budget, um, but it just, it, I, I look at it and I'm like, some of my clients that I've worked with over the years, they're skimming, right? They're just, they're cutting back on the food and stuff like that. And then they drive up in a Mercedes or a BMW. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, you can get a new car anytime. Your body's all you've got. Yeah. Right. So we yeah. need to, I think the number one thing people need to do is prioritize. Yeah. Right. Simple as that. And you were talking about the quality of protein. Here's the thing about protein that people don't realize either. When it comes to how much can I digest and my body use? Well, I'm trying to build muscle. So when somebody says that, I'm thinking about how much protein does it take to build muscle? Here's the problem. You eat 100 grams of protein only about 10, 12, 15% is going to your muscle. Did you hear that? The rest of it's going to your skin, to your organs, to your, to your hair, to your nails. Your entire body relies on uh, good quality protein. So yeah, we're bodybuilders, we're power lifters, we're, we're, we're wanting to look out good on our physique, but the bottom line is quality protein for quality of life. End of yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's like, like going back to what we said just at, on that point, it's, yeah, if you're, if you're just a person that sits around all day, like just to basically be alive and to, to function and, you know, for your organs and your hair, like you're saying, like, that's what those recommendations that are put out there are based off of. Cause that's the average person, but the people we work with, like, no, no one we work with wants to be average, right? No. no why would you want to be average? It's like, no. we're, we're wanting to strive for more. We're, we work with ambitious, busy, professional um, adults and, and those people it's, you know, if, if we are getting you on a, a decent workout program, you, you get serious about it. Yeah. We got to, we got to raise the bar of the, the quality and quantity of protein that you're getting in um, to reach the results that you're looking for. So, yeah. and it takes more energy for you to digest protein. You're burning more yeah. calories. Yeah. Right? It's a more complete food to get in your vitamins and nutrition and micro uh, nutrition. So it's, it's a complete food. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're doing vegan or uh, vegetarian for a specific religious reason or personal reason, that's great. We can help you. But if you think that that is going to get you the quality of protein just by grabbing it off the shelf, you got to put a lot of thought into it yeah. uh, every day. You know? yeah, just, I mean, yeah, it just takes more thought. Like you yeah. said, it just, it just takes more planning. You just got to you got to make sure if like if you're making that decision you got to take it as your responsibility. Like, okay, well, I got to put more planning and thought into it to make sure I'm getting the quality of protein that I need. So, um, but yeah, like, like you mentioned, burns more calories to digest. Um, that kind of goes hand in hand with uh, something else that I want to talk about and just how it's also protein is the most satiating macronutrient. So th those two things is like, you're, you're burning more calories by eating this macronutrient and it keeps you more full than any other macro so, you know, both of those things, it's obvious, like it helps you if your, if your goal is to lose fat. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, just, you know, that, that pretty much says it cut and dry right there, but what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Herb? 100%. And then I'll add one more to that because I represent another generation from Cade. Um, when you get older, you start losing muscle mass, you start breaking down, your hair starts falling out. These are all symptoms of lack of protein. Right. I mean, I'm not going to go back and quote the, 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 the calls that I did, the group calls, but quality of life, the people that have more muscle live longer. If everything's being equal, you have more energy, you slip and fall, you're not going to hurt yourself as much. You're 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 a you're a class A trained human being to be able to take and go through life, whatever it throws at you. Right. We weren't born to sit 
in front of keypads and little thumb things and texting and stuff. We're supposed to be working. We're supposed to be building muscle, maintaining that into our uh, older age. But the fact is people just, they don't do it, right? It becomes harder when you have to replace muscle tissue. So get started earlier, guys. As simple as that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, so let's, let's dive into, cause you've kind of been, you know, myth busting some stuff as, as we've gone, but uh, one of the myths that, I feel like it's put out there so much. And I, I, people ask me this all the time. A bunch of our clients reach out to me. They're like, hey, we've got this much protein in this meal, but I've heard that you can only uh, absorb 20 grams of protein in one sitting. And that's just complete nonsense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so that's that's a complete myth. I'll just say that out outright, right? There's been so much research that you can pretty much absorb as much protein as you can eat in one sitting. Like, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's basically like... You, if you can eat it, you're going to be able to absorb it. Like the, you know, the, the competitive eaters <laughs> that eat hot yeah. dogs and they're eating in like, you know, 40 hot dogs and you know, they're probably not, but that that's, that's like on the extreme of the spectrum. Right. But if most likely, if you're able to sit down and eat it, you're going to be able to absorb it. So yeah. that's one myth I wanted to just bust right there. Well, but but yeah, a, what, a lot of people can put it because what they're saying is what it breaks down to is I can only break down 20 grams in an hour. But my body's going to keep breaking food down until it's all broke down. That's what my body does, <laughs> right? Then they break down to amino acids. They get in the blood system, right? And they're traveling around your body and your blood going through all the damaged muscle, right? The hair, the nails, and fixing things. I want amino acids in my body 24-7, 365. Yeah. If something needs to be repaired, I want to be in a repair mode. I want my brain thinking, let's get bigger. Let's get better. Because he won't stop doing this crazy shit. We got to build back stronger, right? And again, it doesn't have to do with size. It has to do with the quality of your muscle. If you're eating quality protein, it's going to create quality muscle. But as far as how much we can absorb, you're eating it. You're going to absorb all of it. It's just going to take more time to break down. It takes, what, six hours for a steak to break down and 45 minutes to an hour for an egg. So again, you eat your protein based on how much you need when you need it. I eat my steaks at night. So my protein's digesting through the evening, right? Mm -hmm. Steak or eggs first thing in the morning, boom, boom, I'm off to the gym. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. That's, that's a good practical takeaways with, with those couple of examples. Um, Yeah. So that's one myth wanted to just outright, just bust right there. But what, and you already talked about the kidney thing. What what other myths do you feel like are out there on protein? Um, It's interesting. People say, I can't get 200 grams of protein. It's just too much to eat but they can get 200 grams of carbs because carbs turn to sugar. Um, protein is boring. It's protein. You eat it. I mean, the steak tastes great, but after that, it doesn't turn to sugar. It's not going to give me that high. It's not going to spike my insulin. It's not going to get me where I want to go, you know, but you eat for a purpose, right? So that's why I tell the clients, we tell our clients, eat your protein first, fill in with your carbs after that. You know, and we're going to get into the carbs in another conversation. There's nothing wrong with carbs either, guys. There's food is not your enemy. Yeah. Lack of education is people's enemy. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what, one of the things you just said kind of jogged my memory on something else that we could talk about on, on protein. It's just, you know, and this, this has to do with the carbs too, but we talked about on a, on a coaching call recently where if you're not wanting to, like you said, spike your blood sugar and like, you know, kind of have these these highs and then crashes like protein is the, the best thing for that too. It's going to help you feel satiated. It's not going to spike your blood sugar way up. Right. But it's going to help you still feel full and, and like have a little bit of like, it's still going to go up a little bit, but it's enough to, to function. Right. And, and keep you feeling sharp and not have kind of that brain fog that a lot of times like having simple sugars and simple carbs and stuff like that can create. So I, I find that, you know, and there was this book called willpower and a lot of times if you're spiking it way up and it's crashing, like it, your, your willpower can be all over the place. Or if your blood sugar is too low at times, also you know, like your mood, your willpower, things can be affected. But if you're, if you're steady, right. If you keep that, that blood sugar steady and it's like you're satiated, you're feeling good. And you've got that steady blood sugar throughout the day, then, then your mood and your willpower is also steady. I feel like those two things kind of go hand in hand a lot of times. So. Yeah, yeah. When when insulin's present because you were eating too much sugar, <laughs> when it goes up that quick, it has a tendency to damage organs, right? I mean, it's a it's a delivery hormone. 
you know, so again, if I'm spiking my insulin after working out, apple juice with my protein, whatever, I'm going to shovel whatever I have in my system into my muscles. And that's going to be protein, amino acids, yeah. right? Yeah. So everything that we eat, everything that we have like that is a tool. Yeah. So what we try to do is teach people how to use the tools correctly, yeah. right? There, there, there's some things that change over the years and gotten a little bit more specific with peptides and stuff. But the bottom line is carbs, protein, good fats has never changed. Yeah. Our bodies have not, we need that. And you can tell people, right? Um, one of the biggest things when I train my girls is when they started eating the protein, the first thing they said is, "Her, my nails keep growing so fast. I got to go to the nail shop more <laughs> because you get more protein. But you never noticed it before. And all of a sudden, you eat more protein. Like, damn, I got to get a haircut, <laughs> right? So again, this stuff is used. Your body's going to use it. Give it to your body, guys. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're already kind of diving into the next episode, a little teaser on some of the carb stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so, but yeah, so what other kind of any other tips or practical takeaways? I like the egg and the steak point that you made, but anything else before we wrap this one up on on protein, you know, for people to just kind of take some some practical stuff away from? Yeah, when you get hungry, you should think of what protein you want to eat. Right? Where do you want to go to eat tonight? Everybody's thinking of carbs, if you ask them. Okay, what type of protein? Oh, I'm feeling like let's get some turkey. Let's get some steak. Let's get whatever, right? And then and then always think about protein first, right? Um, and then eat to perform. You're not a bodybuilder. Don't run around getting two, three grams of, of, of protein per uh, body weight. It's not going to hurt you, but it's hard to do, right? So stay focused on what you're doing in the gym, fitness-wise, and then make sure everybody has talks about working out and getting a trainer and doing it's recovery, guys. It's like, are you doing the things you need to recover? I mean, we're not talking about sleep today, but anybody out there might be in great shape. You lose one night of sleep, you're screwed, yeah. right? So again, information. Yeah, love it. Cool, guys. Well, yeah, you know, like like we always say, Elevate Everyday Podcast. It's not just mental masturbation, right? Like, take this stuff right right away, like put it into practice in your life, right? So, um, and again, this is a part one of a part three series on macros. But like we said, like we, we kind of had the best one first protein. We, we believe is the most important to pay attention to. So put this stuff into practice, guys. Let us know if you have any questions, stay tuned for, for carbs next week. Other than that, elevate every damn day. We'll see you in the next video. Peace. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.